Today we're going to talk about the correct way to get your stuff back from your ex. But first things first, if you're going through a breakup and you're a little bit confused as to what your next steps should be, whether you should be trying to get your ex back or trying to move on and find someone new, probably the best starting point for you is to hop over to my website, www.exboyfriendrecovery.com and take my ex recovery chances quiz. It's a free two minute quiz designed to basically tell you what kind of chance you have of getting your ex back so you know what to do going forward. Now, all you have to do if you wanna take this quiz is simply look in the description link below this YouTube video and click on it. It's truly that simple. Okay, let's talk a little bit about exchanging items and specifically what I mean by them. So when you enter into a relationship with someone for a long period of time and you tend to be a little bit older and you're staying at each other's houses or you're living together, it's not a shock for you to accumulate stuff together. And usually when a breakup occurs, there's a certain protocol you have to go through to exchange the items or exchange the stuff. And what I'd like to do today is talk about what you should be doing if you're forced into one of these situations. But first things first, what should you do if you're in the middle of a no contact rule? In other words, you're ignoring your ex for let's say, 30 days on purpose with the intent of making them miss you and also kind of cultivating your own personal life so that things kind of get a little bit back to normal. What should you do if your ex hits you up in the middle of no contact, let's say day 15, and says, hey, come get your stuff, or hey, I need that thing at your house. Well, if they do that, then your hand is essentially forced and you are allowed to break the no contact rule for one specific meeting. And if you stick around to the end of the video, I'm gonna tell you what the goal should be for that meeting, what you should be doing, and maybe the philosophy you should have about it, sort of meeting them. But what about if you wanna see your ex and you want your stuff back? What are the rules there? Well, in my personal opinion from my research starting in 2012, I found that the only time that you should reach out to your ex to get items back are if those items are very valuable to you. Now I'll give you an example. Trying to initiate a meetup with your ex to get a toothbrush back is not the same as meeting up with your ex to get a car title back. There's a bit of a discrepancy there. So ultimately the best way you should know if you should be trying to get some of your items back from your ex is number one, how valuable they are to you and number two, how important they are. If they're not really valuable or they're not very important, and what I mean by that is you can just simply go to a convenience store and replace them like toiletries, don't bother. You're just looking for an excuse to talk to your ex during no contact or even just trying to force an interaction that's not really gonna work out too well in your favor. But let's take those two circumstances where your ex basically forces you to give him or her their items back, or you have the need to get something really important back from your ex, and you have to do an exchange of items. What's the overall goal for this exchange? How can we play this correctly? Okay, so I'm gonna to try to make this as simple as possible. Generally speaking, when you're looking at seeing an ex to exchange stuff with them, you're going to have one singular goal. And that one singular goal is to have your ex think about you constantly after the interaction. Now, how you achieve that goal is a little complicated. So if we have one goal, which is basically how can I make my ex think about me constantly after we exchange items, how do I accomplish that goal? Well, if you wanna kinda of do the inception dream within a dream concept, there are goals that will help you achieve this one singular goal. So essentially, if you want to have your ex think about you constantly after the interaction, there are three things I need you to do. You're going to have an external goal, an internal goal, and a philosophical goal. So let's talk about what each of these concepts mean. So an external goal is essentially something that is outside of yourself. You're trying to achieve a goal that has nothing to do with what you think or what you believe. In other words, it's everything outside of your mind. The internal goal is the exact opposite. It's what you're thinking about. So what's the goal? What, what are you gonna be talking about? Things of that nature. The philosophical goal is what you believe, what you embody. 
So let's talk about each of these three goals and what they should be to help you have an intriguing interaction that will make your ex think about you constantly. So the external goal in this particular case is absolutely the simplest one. It's simply to look really, really good. Looks do matter to men and looks do matter to females. They don't matter as much as you think they matter, but you wanna put your best foot forward when your ex does see you. So essentially you just wanna make sure you look really good. That's your external goal. But really the other two goals is where we get to the meat of the matter. Your internal goal will be to always have something interesting to say. Now, in order for you to understand how to say something interesting, you need to understand the different types of conversations. You have small talk, then you have telling stories, then you have sharing opinions, then you have virgin ground, and then finally you have sharing feelings. So what are those type of conversations should you be looking to have with an ex who you're exchanging items with? You're only really gonna wanna do three of these type of conversations. Small talk, sharing stories, and sharing opinions. But mostly I want you to hone in on that story part. I want you to tell a really intriguing story when you see your ex that is delightful, that is funny, that is intriguing, that will make him ask a question. Just one singular question. What happens next? And really, I don't want you to come in with a planned story. I want you to come in with a planned idea. Like, hey, I'm gonna tell him about this thing that happened. And usually that story needs to embody what you've been doing without him. And something about how your life has been going pretty cool or this really cool thing that happened in your life and he missed out on it. But you don't wanna make it sound like you're bragging. So it needs to be this really organic type of conversation. My best piece of advice here is to get one of your girlfriends or one of your guy friends and practice with them. Next, let's talk about the philosophical goal. So the philosophical goal is essentially what you need to be believing or embodying. So for those of you who don't know or aren't familiar with this terminology, I'm a big believer in something called becoming ungettable. Essentially a striving to be the very best version of yourself that you can be. And living every day almost like a samurai where you're trying to achieve perfection, understanding that perfection is impossible. It's more about the pursuit. It's more about the pursuit of greatness. And the problem is I think most people allow their breakups to break them. But I try to teach people to look at their breakups as a growing opportunity to become ungettable, become that one thing that your ex wants but can't have. And you do this in a lot of different ways, but usually show, don't tell. The best way to approach this is Find ways to live your life in a secure way. Own your insecurities. This is a new thing that we've been trying out. And I heard from a really amazing psychologist named Antia Boyd, who was basically talking to me about how people should be interacting when they have insecurities. And one thing she said is own your insecurities. And I love it. It's basically being okay with the fact that you're not perfect and heck, you're just going to embrace it. And sometimes that is such a stark difference from how you were in the breakup where your ex knew all of your insecurities, but the fact that you're embracing it and basically saying, yeah, I'm that way, deal with it, is enough to make them realize something's different about them. That's also enough to make them realize after the fact, wow, they've really changed and then you've got them. They're thinking about you after the interaction. But how long should this interaction be where you're exchanging items? Well, generally speaking, I think it's better to keep things short and sweet. So essentially in a perfect world, it would look like this. You and your ex meet up to exchange the stuff or the items. So you come in, you exchange the items, you talk a little bit and you leave. But during that talk, you kind of plant the seeds where he's gonna be thinking about you afterwards. And that causes him to text you and wonder what you're up to. That's how it would work in a perfect world. 
But oftentimes what happens is you get there and you kind of enjoy the conversations you're having with your ex too much and you overstay your welcome. So what you need to do is you need to have a really good, strong discipline and a really good, strong gut feeling. So you've often heard me talk about the Z Garnick effect. It's basically this effect where people remember interrupted or incomplete tasks better than completed ones. So essentially what will make the bigger impact for your ex to remember you after you leave is if you engage them in an extremely pleasing conversation, you feel like this is going really well. And when you feel like it's going really well, stay a little bit longer and then leave. Because what I think happens most of the time is you overstay your welcome and then there's these long, awkward silences where neither party knows what to say or what to do. So instead of having or dealing with those problems, go into the interaction feeling like, okay, maximum, this is gonna last between 30 to 45 minutes of an interaction and then I'm out of there. The goal, again, is to get them to think about you after the interaction. And if you can implement the Zigarnik effect on top of those three goals, the internal, external, and philosophical goals, he will think about you after this exchange. Hey there, thanks so much for getting to the end of this YouTube video. Again, if you haven't already, make sure you take that quiz that I was talking about at the beginning of the video. All you have to do is simply look in the description link below the YouTube video and click on the blue link you see there. Again, if you haven't liked, commented, or subscribed to the YouTube channel, you know the thing. I say this thing at the end of every video. Just please do that stuff. It helps me out. I'll see you next time.